Greetings from Maven Consulting Services. We are back with one more video and this time we are going to share with you on some tips pertaining to the letters of recommendations that you take as a part of your applications to the universities abroad. So it's always a daunting task for many applicants and they always come up with questions asking who should be my recommenders? From whom should I take the letters of recommendations? Because they have multiple options. There are also a lot of myths associated with the letter of recommendations. So questions like, does the designation of the letter of recommendation matter? The designation of the person who's giving me the letter matters. The hierarchy matters. Or whether they should always be PhD holders. Uh, what is the duration of the time they have to know me if they have to be a valid letter of recommendation? So these are some of the things that I'm going to give you today tips on how to select your recommenders so that your profile strengthens and you make a strong application for universities abroad. So we have two kinds of applicants generally who apply to universities abroad. They are freshers and they are working professionals. So first let's talk about freshers who approach for letters of recommendations. So ideally for freshers, your recommenders should be your professors or teachers who've tutored you at your bachelor's degree. So again, now the question here is, many of them are not professors. They do not have a doctorate degree. Can we take letters of recommendations from, from them? Yes, you can. There is no harm at all. You can definitely take letters of recommendations from them because you cannot have three professors who are ideally PhD holders in your department or they may not be knowing you. So please note the designation comparatively does not make a big difference and you can have people who need not be doctorate. It's just that when you're choosing your recommenders, make sure that they have interacted with you, they have observed you, they have tutored you on good amount of subjects. So even when they've observed you, it need not be only academic related work. It can also be your participations in the department. It can be things related to your uh, co-curricular activities. It can be things related to your extracurricular activities. Your participation, your involvement in the departmental activities also can be mentioned by your recommenders apart from the academics. Good letters of recommendations can come from head of the department because they ideally uh, know your personality, they know your involvement in the departmental activities. Project guides, people who have taught you subjects relevant to what specialization or courses you intend to take when you go abroad for studies can be good strong letters of recommendations. We also have some students who complete internships and they try and take letters of recommendations from these internship places. But one thing that you have to keep in mind, your internship should be at least four to six months long and only then a letter of recommendation becomes valid. If not, uh, the admission committee boards and the universities abroad ideally feel that if your internship is only for one month long, in one month a recommender cannot make an opinion about you, about your strengths, about your skill sets. They cannot make opinions. So they feel that's a sort of weak letter of recommendation. So if at all you want to take a letter of recommendation from an internship that we've interned, you can definitely take a letter of recommendation, but make sure it is at least for four months to six months. Then it makes a strong letter of recommendation. So that was about freshers. Now, what about working professionals? We do have working professionals who worked in the industry for one year, two years, three years, and then they're trying for their applications abroad. Then yes, uh, we would need letters of recommendations from the workplace to strengthen your profile, to make the application strong to the admission committee board. So if you have two years or more, then we recommend that you have two letters of recommendations from your workplace. And if you have uh, less than one year or about one year plus or one and a half years, then you can have one letter of recommendation from your workplace and two from your academic institution where you've completed your bachelor's. So please note that majority of the universities that you plan on applying abroad need one letter of recommendation mandatorily from the professor or academic institution where you've done your bachelor's. They insist that one academic letter of recommendation is required. So if you have more than two years, two from work, one from college, if you have about a year and a half, you can take one from work and two from college to balance it significantly. The next question that most applicants ask us is, 
Does the designation of the person at the workplace matter when we are giving letters of recommendations or when we are taking letters of recommendations? Now the hierarchy significantly does not matter guys because if your organization is bigger, ideally taking a letter of recommendation from the vice president or the CEO of the company makes no sense or logic to me because they are not the guys who observe you on day-to-day -day work. They're not the people who ideally monitor your day-to-day -day, uh, progress and have observed on your work that they can give you a strong letter of recommendation. Just because you know the VP or the CEO of the company taking a letter of recommendation from them does not make sense until unless it's a startup or it's a small organization. But big companies like let's say TCS, Wipro, if you're taking in letters of recommendations from these organizations, taking it from the VP and the CEO makes no sense to me at all. But one thing that you have to make sure is the person giving you a letter of recommendation from the workplace has to be at least one designation above you. That is very, very important. And interact or take letter of recommendation from one who uh, monitors your day-to-day -day work, who knows the kind of progress you've made at a workplace, the kind of projects that you've worked on, the kind of skill sets you've acquired over the years, the kind of personality you've built over the years, those letters of recommendations become strong guys and not a letter of recommendation from the vice president or the CEO of the company, absolutely not. So these were some of the tips you have to keep in mind when you're looking at choosing your recommenders for letters of recommendations at your workplace or at the college. Another thing is now most of the letters of recommendations have become online. So what happens ideally apart from the letter that they give you when the universities send links to your professors or your uh, employers or your managers for submitting a letter of recommendation they also give you some sort of grading that your recommenders have to tick. So uh, they'll have to grade you on certain parameters maybe in the top 1-2%, to 2 top 5%, top 10%, top 20% or unable to observe. So obviously you should be in good books with your recommenders because if they are going to mark you in the top 25% or unable to observe then however strong a letter may be sometimes your profile weakens. So make sure they are very well aware of the process and they, they know what they have to do so that your letters of recommendations become strong. So what are the different parameters sometimes the universities ask? They ask, they give parameters to the recommenders like working in a team, ability uh, to handle peer pressure, time management skills. So these are the parameters and they have to grade you apart from the letter that they are going to give you. So that's it guys. These were some of the important tips for you to keep in mind when you're approaching your recommenders for the letter of recommendations. Keep watching more videos of ours for more tips on study abroad process. Thank you.